Hey there. Welcome to Conversations with Coaches. I am Jennifer Timorski, CEO and Chief Strategist of Virtual Marketing Experts. And for those of you that are listening in the future, we are currently towards the end of March 2020, which is right in the middle of the COVID-19 quarantine, social distancing, um, isolation. And today I am chatting with Darlene Hertz um, with You and Powered Services. Uh, good morning, Dur Darlene. Let's uh, let you introduce yourself to our audience. Well, good morning, Jennifer. Thank you for having me. My name is Darlene Hertz, and I am the founder of You Empowered Services, which is an NLP coaching and training service that particularly focuses on business professionals who are looking to really become the best version of themselves. And that is a lot about understanding your mind and your mindset so that you can then create the environment to make the money that you so deserve, you dream of, and that can support those dreams. Awesome. So I know today we're going to talk about positivity and not just positive thinking, but also kind of the science behind positive positivity. And right now I'm sure a lot of people need your expertise in this area. So I'm going to go ahead and jump in with our first question, which is why is it important for someone to focus on positive thinking? So really, um, I got involved in this way back when I didn't even know it, right? I can remember when I was probably about 28, 29 years old, my dad, we were discussing something, and my dad literally said to me, well, you just wait until you're older, you'll feel this way too. And I specifically remember thinking, I don't know what I'm going to think about or what I'm going to feel like, but it's not going to be that. And as it turned out, I did get caught up in that cycle of defaulting to negative uh, thinking as opposed to looking at the bright picture or the bright side of things. And I realized that really taking living in a, a, a time when that was going on and then all of a sudden my son, who is an army soldier, is going to war for the first time, all of that uh, really dropped me to my knees. And uh, I didn't see a way out. Um, I couldn't figure it out on my own, although I kept telling myself I was smart enough to do that. Um, that I ended up picking up the phone, hiring a coach. And I knew I didn't want a therapist because I didn't want to keep reliving this experience. I wanted to move on forward past it. And so I called a coach and began that day um, understanding that Choice is a powerful thing and suffering is always optional. Always. Yeah, so that is one of my favorite sayings also. But what do you mean by that? By choice is a powerful thing, but suffering is always optional. So we live in an environment, let's just take today, for example, in the middle of our pandemic, right? And I did not choose for this pandemic to happen, right? So people will say, well, that's not my choice. Although that's true, the suffering part I have 100% control over. I get to choose how it is that I'm going to live in this moment. So what do I have a choice about, right? So I have a choice that I can react either positively or negatively, right? I can use, I can stand on the side of making excuses for my behavior, that's very disempowering, or making excuses for my choices or I can stand on what we call it cause. Uh, I can say, well, this has happened, what's my plan? And so many wonderful things have happened to me during this time that sometimes when I know that I'm surrounded by negative energy, I almost don't even want to talk about it because people are like, oh, you always have something positive to say. Well, that is now my default. And I've worked hard to make that happen because I understand that we kind of default to negativity. So when I say choice is a powerful thing, suffering is always optional, it is exactly that. We always, always, always have a choice. Maybe not for the situation, i.e. pandemic, but what is my choice? Do I want to stay home, uh, close myself off from the world, quit doing business, 
uh, stop looking for people to help? Or do I say, well, what do I have at my hand? I've got Zoom, I've got email, I've got phone calls, I've got uh, even snail mail, right? Sending cards, I'm doing that. And it's so cool to have somebody text me and say, hey, thanks for the card. That was really cool getting something in the mail, right? So there's so many things that we can do to empower ourselves or you, we can just continue to live with the suffering. All right. So when you think about um, empowering ourselves and moving through that, um, kind of, are there stages, are there things that we need to do in order to move through from negative to positive thinking? So I really have come up with three A's. I think I'm gonna call them A to the third power, if you will. So we're aware, we acknowledge, and action. So the awareness comes in, like for instance, if I would say, um, today is a disastrous day, right? Oh, it's just a disastrous day. So now I'm, I can become aware that I've put myself in that thought pattern, right? And then I can acknowledge that, okay, I am aware that I am thinking that this is a disastrous day. I'm writing the story of my own life, so I can look on it, at it however it is that I want, right? Very sure. But the other thing that I know is what you feed grows, what you starve dies. So if I'm going to feed into today is a disastrous day, tomorrow's gonna to be just like it, all my days are the same, then what you feed grows, what energy you put out is exactly the energy that's gonna come back to you. So having that awareness, I'm aware I'm thinking that and acknowledging it, I'm aware that I am thinking in a negative space. And then with it between acknowledgement and action, I get to make some choices. And that choice is, okay, I'm aware that today is a disastrous day. However, what I do know is I get to write my own story and tomorrow gets to be different. And that alone, even me saying that, this is stuff I preach all the time, but even saying that, I can feel an internal shift inside of myself. And so I know the power behind uh, what you feed grows, what you starve dies. And then acknowledging that I'm the author of my own story. I'm going to write a different story for tomorrow. That's where the action comes in, right? So what is that action going to look like? Well, I'm going to acknowledge what yesterday was like and I'm going to choose for today to be better. And I think that we're gonna get into the actual science behind it in a little bit, but I think that, that that right there is where we can then look towards the future and not having to look back. That's awesome. So speaking of the science, um, I know a lot of people think positive thinking is, um, I don't know, Pollyanna-ish, but <laughs> There is a science behind it. Let's explain to our audience what that science is and kind of how that relates. So that is true. And I have been accused of being a Pollyanna. And um, I used to be like, kind of like, what do you mean? And now I'm like, you bet. Because I know that I write my story, right? So the science behind positive thinking is it's really interesting that we, there's, I always talk about this complaining brain. So if you look at a picture of a complaining brain compared to a brain that is quote unquote normal, you can see how we truly change what our brain looks like based on what we're feeding it. So a chronic complainer, that brain, there is less space, it looks like depression, it looks like anxiety. We know that 95% of disease is called by, caused by dis-ease, right? So once again, what we feed grows. So as we constantly complain, we are literally changing our brain. We are literally training our brain, if you will, to focus on negative and we also release cortisol, which is a stress hormone that causes high blood pressure, high cholesterol, um, even cancer. 
all of those things are based on what we're feeding our brain. Does that make sense? It makes perfect sense. So what do we get to do, right? That's so the question. <laughs> and in the, on the foundation of choice is a powerful thing, suffering is always optional. And what you feed grows, what you starve dies. So what happens when you release, uh, when you think happy thoughts, right? So cortisol, or excuse me, serotonin releases. And that too changes the brain. So if it got what you got yourself into, you can also get out. That's the really, really good news is that you can retrain your brain. And that is so exciting to me. And that's where I work with my clients on is helping them retrain their brain. And so what does that look like? So there's a couple of different, um, I mean, it's a whole, like it's my life, right? But just a few little tidbits that I would like to share is that study after study after study shows that when you truly adopt an attitude of gratitude, that is one of the very first things that you can do to start creating an environment of positivity. It takes a focus off of woe is me and projects into the world what you are inter eternally or internally feeling. So even in, in um, this moment of this pandemic, if you will, I am so incredibly grateful that we have what we're doing right now, Zoom. I am an extrovert, and for me to be able to stay connected to people, now I would kind of like to be touchy-feely with them because I'm a hugger too, but to know that I can truly stay connected like that is just amazing. I am so very thankful for that. You know, and, and I think generally when we start out with this whole attitude of gratitude, I'm thankful for my family, I'm thankful for my kids. And then as you keep practicing that, you say, I'm thankful for my family because I know that they're always there to support me. Or because I know they're there for my learning, right? Depending on where your family is. But as you constantly feed your brain with that, all of a sudden, the cortisol is decreased by 23%, study shows. You thought, think, talk about taking a lot of stress off of yourself. Wow. And the other thing that I would really like to share is solution focused complaining. All right. So it is um, a joke, if you will, to say I'm never going to complain again in my life. <laughs> that is so not the truth. <laughs> However, what we can do is we can create a solution-focused complaint. So I remember, and I didn't know any of the science or any of this, but one of my foundations that I've always stood on is don't complain about it unless you have a solution to it. And little did I know that I would be literally selling this as science, right? <laughs> um, however, always have a always have a reason to complain. You know, so if I'm gonna complain about something, recognizing what you feed grows, what you starve dies, I better have a pattern interrupt in there somewhere, right? So the point of me complaining about the rain today is what, right? And always have an end game to that. Like, um, for instance, uh, when we, when we always look at um, a situation where we're complaining, one of the first things that I always do is think, what about this is about me? And that, in that involves humility, that involves stepping beyond your ego. Um, we have this thing that I do call it ego, but I also call it the voice in the head. I also call it the itty bitty shitty committee because to me that's just really what works best is We've got this committee that's constantly feeding us because we've trained it that way, right? right? I call it my ego. And in reality, it's even designed to serve me, right? So uh, I'm going to jump off of a bridge, you know, that fear factor, the fight or flight steps in, right? So it's there for a good reason, but it also is there sometimes that when we feed it so much negativity, it's not going to serve us. It actually begins doing exactly the opposite. It holds us back from, from where we're supposed to be. So if we, if we have a plan in place, what about this is about me? 
be honest, get real, right? And sometimes that is just so humbling. And then taking responsibility for it. You know, well, I, I did have a, a choice to send those notes out and I just chose not to, right? I did have a choice to join an online networking organization where they're supporting each other, but I chose not to. Just any kind of responsibility that you can take, that moves you from disempowerment to empowerment, always, if we can find one little speck of hope. So that is solution-based complaining. I mean, it also goes back to that awareness, acknowledgement, and action those steps will allow us to move to a solution-focused uh, outcome. So um, it's just really, really uh, interesting. And I love that, that there are no coincidences that this is where I end up uh, living my mission in life, right? Is to focus on, I'll call it intentional positivity and, um, and adding people, adding value to people's lives based on that. I have loved this talk because it is so true. Um, you know, I complaining without action or without a solution to the complaint has always drove me insane. And I didn't realize why until now, because if you don't have a solution, if you don't have an action, you're whining. You're not really. Yeah. And you know what happens when you whine? This is like, you know, this is what I, this was one of my experiences in my life. I kept having this pity party. Yes. You know? And I kept trying to pull people into my pity party, right? Right. And one day you look around and you go, yeah, there ain't nobody coming to my pity party anymore. Yeah. So all alone, right? Yeah. And then what you feed grows, what you starve dies. We're back to that. Yeah. Right? Yeah, it really allows people to, especially in this time, to make shifts in their lives, right? Like, if you purposely focus on the positives in whatever is going on in your life, um, you can see the solutions to whatever might have happened that was negative. Um, and that can actually move you forward and move you past wherever you might be stuck. Yep, 100%. Because part of that science behind that negative thinking is that it does make it harder for us to focus, harder for us to process, harder for us to think. So we're just like just cramming our brain full of all of this stuff, junk, if you will. And so we're not even uh, aware until we choose to become aware, right, that all of this is going on. And so we become what we call paralyzed or stuck. Um, feeling hopeless, helpless, whatever, we can fill in the blank, right? But you're exactly right. And we call it um, shift. When you create shift in your life, then you are then able to move over to that empowering state again. And, and even if it's a matter of, I'm sorry, even if it's a matter of writing it down and keeping it in front of you. I write on my bathroom wall, or my bath, not my bathroom wall, my bathroom mirror, and, you know, I write little messages to myself when I need that reminder and stuff like that. So, yeah. Yeah, it's, I think it's where everyone wants to be, right? In that empowerment, you want everybody really in the long run wants to be empowering their own lives. Yeah. So thank you so much for having this conversation with me today. Yeah. Um, and I want to give our audience a chance to connect with you. How's, what is the best way that they can reach out? So the best way to reach out to me is Darlene, D-E-R-L-E-N-E, -E -E, at youempoweredservices.com. That's my email. And if you email me, I would be happy to share with you some of the things that I do for, you know, I name my business You Empowered Services for a, a very specific reason, right? Um, so I'm offering uh, a, a little three-week course called Positive Thinking Secrets. And that is going to focus on pretty much what we just talked about now, just go a little bit more in depth. And also we do these train your brain for success boot camps, what are, which are uh, almost an immediate shift that you're able to take where we learn the science behind communication and how we get to be at cause for that. 
responsible for that ourselves. I do coaching, NLP based coaching and training. And um, the next logical question is NLP, what's NLP, right? So uh, NLP is Neuro Linguistics Programming. And I would tell you that in a sentence, it's the science of human excellence. So I'm not about being perfect. I know that that's usually what pe puts people on drugs. <laughs> but I am about living a life of excellence. And when we use our neurology, so our mind, our mindset, our neurology, and we feed that, and we use linguistics, our language, our words, our communication, verbal and nonverbal, to create our programming. And um, all of that works together to create where we are at cause for our life. And we do write our own story and take responsibility for that. That is so awesome. Okay, so everyone, I will have this contact information in the show notes below. So feel free to click on her email or her website and connect with Darlene. I know you will get an immense benefit, whether it's from her positive power of positive thinking secrets or through NLP. Um, either way, you will see shifts in your lives. Thank you for joining me today, Darlene, and thank you for everyone else for joining us. Thank you, guys.